every community education telling patients, you know, call the ambulance, you know, have, have someone transport you there, because if, if you're driving yourself, you're a danger to everyone else. Um, if you have an arrhythmia, if, if, if someone else, if you're driving your loved one and they pass out while you're driving, what can you do for them? So, so definitely calling in situations like this where they can do the 12 lead EKGs, then they transmit those and then the hospital knows exactly what's coming in, like they said. <laughs> We're not quite to that point. There's there's actually some talk of trying to get that um, EKGs for the for the ambulance, which you know I guess the ones out in Garden City, you know, Fish Haven area, that would be would be a real benefit. You know, we could have the helicopter landing about the same time they got here in terms of in terms of speeding up transport. So, question number two: What are the goals of therapy for patients with acute coronary syndrome? What are we trying to do? Reperfuse, that's the biggest one. Yep. Get blood and oxygen back to that, that heart muscle tissue. You know, limit the size of the infarct. Um, if, if a patient has has a big infarct, then you get left ventricular dysfunction, it, you know, low ejection fraction, congestive heart failure. <coughs> average you know, you know the average lifespan for someone with congestive heart failure from L V dysfunction. It's actually less than five years. So a, a true diagnosis, you know, EF less than 35, 35%, it's as bad as having a diagnosis of cancer. So, so that we're really trying to prevent that muscle damage and prevent those, those long-term complications. Um, other goals of therapy, what else are we trying to do with treating acute coronary syndrome? <coughs> Trying to stabilize them too, from a <coughs> excuse me, from a vital sign standpoint, and keep their blood pressure up, and make sure their oxygen saturation remains uh, appropriate. Exactly. Yeah, stabilization, and another part of that is pain <coughs> control. You know, because the more pain pain they're having, the more anxious they are. You know, the adrenaline, the cytokines. You know, more heart muscle damage if if they're having pain. So trying to decrease their pain, <coughs> relief of pain really is a true goal, and it's. It's interesting the medicines that they use actually have dual mechanisms as far as improving pain and physiologically helping helping the patient. We'll cover medicines in a little bit. And then the third thing is treatment or you know preventing or treating acute life-threatening arrhythmias. So again, back to why we call the ambulance. You know, if if someone has an MI, you know, then we have them on telemetry. You know, we're watching for watching for arrhythmias. Um, Actually had an excellent case of that here in the hospital just within the last month. A patient with new onset AFib, and it's like, well, this could be an MI. Four hours later, we had cardiac enzymes, and as I was driving in, he actually went into VFib. And nurses got down there, cardioverted him, got him back with one shock, and got him got him down to 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 more treatment. So, final question on this seg segment is aspirin. What? <coughs> Why do we still use aspirin? I mean, we have fibrinolytics. Why, why do we still use aspirin? So focused on platelet aggregation, and that's one. Of, that's the initial clot forming process. Is the aggregate, uh, the, the, you know, those platelets coming together? So exactly. And it even works a little bit different than Plavix, you know. So it's <coughs> it's, a, it's immediately available. It's quick. It's yeah. cheap. Quick and expensive. It works. Yeah, so it's great. So when when would you not give aspirin? Contraindications for giving aspirin. I'm allergic to it. Okay. Allergic like it makes my stomach hurt? No. Yeah, hives. So, yeah, hives or anaphylaxis, you know, true aspirin allergy. Um, recent severe bleeding, you know, think about it, but I've, I've still given it, and sometimes, you know, the, the benefits are so high that, you know, the, the main thing is the aspirin allergy. Um, so. There was a question about your protocol in the practice test about not giving the aspirin, and I didn't understand that. Is that something I can ask you? Sure. Sure. It was, um, you guys remember that question? Mm -hmm. And it had to do with the fiber, uh, <coughs> fibrinolytics, or? Yeah, if they had had that, you didn't give the aspirin, or, let's see. It says, do not give aspirin for at least 24 hours if the RTPA is administered. Okay. So that's after that's that. That's after that, yeah. It's okay. In, in, in the protocol, we give it before. But okay. after, 
because you give the fibrinolytics, you put them on heparin, you know, their blood is so watery thin at that point that you, you don't give any aspirin for 24 hours after after giving fibrinolytics. You know, so kind of my rule of thumb, I wait until we're done with IV heparin, which is typically 48 hours, you know, just so you're so you're safely past that window with the fibrinolytics, but then you can safely restart the aspirin after that. Okay. So, good. Any other questions? What's the related question? Does a patient with ST segment elevation MI has ongoing chest discomfort? Fibrinolytic therapy has been ordered. Heparin 4,000 units IV was, the bolus was administered, and the heparin infusion of 1,000 units per hour is, is being administered. Aspirin was not taken by the patient because he had a history of gastritis five years ago. Your next action is to you, know, you give aspirin basically or, or do substitute um, Plavix is what they're asking on that. And, you know, you, you already, you haven't given the fibrinol fibrinolytic, but you have given, you've yeah. already administered heparin. The person, you know, had a, a GI, just gastritis five years ago, so I don't think they'd be contraindicated. I'd still give that. So I would probably give this. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, good. Well, it just makes yeah. it makes sense. It's so the heparin doesn't have anything to do with it. It's the yeah, it's it's just a fibrinolytic. Yeah, heparin's okay, you know, with aspirin. So. Okay. Periodically, we stop and there's questions. There's three three pause sections in this where we'll we'll talk about it. But acute coronary syndrome. Dr. Wolf actually just called me, an 80 year old with chest pain. That can you come over? It's like well. <laughs> really can't right now, but negative enzymes, but EKG was suggestive, so he's, he's, we'll probably hear a helicopter sometime while we're doing this, um, but acute coronary syndrome, we're going to go through, go through this video, if I pick the right remote, Besides play button or enter, Christy? Christy? Yes, sir. You got the play button or enter. Ah, there it goes. At least it turned black. Okay. And the light switch is outside, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, I shall light switch. Okay. <laughs>